given the semantics of the real world and the messiness of that, what does the word correctness mean when you're talking about code? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dimensions to correctness. Historically, and this is one of the reasons I say that we're coming to the end of the era of software, because for the last 40 years or so, software correctness was really defined uh, about functional correctness. I write a function, it's got some inputs, does it produce the right outputs? If so, then I can turn it on, hook it up to the live database, and it goes. And more and more now, we have, I mean, in fact, I think the bright line in the sand between machine learning systems or modern data-driven systems versus software, classical software systems is that the values of the input actually have to be considered with the function together to say this whole thing is correct or not. And usually there's a performance SLA as well. Like, did it actually finish making What's this- SLA? Sorry, service level agreement. So it has to return within some time. You have a 10 millisecond time budget to return a prediction of this level of accuracy, right? Um, so these are things that were not traditionally in most business computing systems for the last 20 years at all. People didn't think about it. But now we have value dependence on functional correctness. So that that question of correctness is becoming a bigger and bigger question. What is that map to the end of software? We've thought about software as just this thing that you can do in isolation with some you know, test trial inputs and in a very, you know, um, very sort of sandboxed environment. And we can quantify how does it scale, how does it, you know, perform, how many nodes do we need to allocate if we want to scale this many inputs. When we start turning this stuff into prediction systems real cybernetic systems, you're going to find scenarios where you get inputs that you're going to want to spend a little more time thinking about. You're going to find inputs that are not, it's not clear what you should do, right? So then the software has a varying amount of runtime uh, and correctness with regard to input. And that is a different kind of system altogether. Now it's a full-on cybernetic system. It's a next generation information system that is not like traditional software systems. Can you maybe describe what is a cybernetic system? Do you include humans in that picture? So is it is a human in the loop kind of complex mess of the whole kind of interactivity of software with the real world or, or is it something more concrete? Well, when I say cybernetic, I really do mean that the software itself is closing the observe, orient, decide, act loop by itself. So humans being out of the loop is, is the fact what for me uh, makes it a cybernetic system. And so humans are out of that loop. That when expect. humans are out of the loop, when the machine is actually sort of deciding on its own what it should do next to get more information, that makes it a cybernetic system. So we're just at the dawn of this, right? I think everyone talking about MLAI, it's 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 great, but really the thing we should be talking about is when we really enter the cybernetic era, and all of the questions of ethics and governance and all correctness and all these things, they really are the most important questions. Okay, can we just linger on this? What sure. does it mean for the human to be out of the loop in a cybernetic system? Because isn't the cybernetic system that's ultimately accomplishing some kind of purpose that at the at the bottom, you know, the, the turtles all the way down at the bottom turtle is a human. It's well, the human person. may have set some criteria, but the human wasn't precise. So for instance, I just read the other day that um, earlier this year, or maybe it was last year at some point, the um, Libyan army, I think, um, sent out some automated killer drones with explosives. Mm -hmm. um, and there was no human in the loop at that point. They basically put them in a geofenced area, said, find any moving target, like a truck or vehicle that looks like this, and boom. Um, that's not a human in the loop, right? So increasingly, the less human there is in the loop, the more concerned you are about these kinds of systems. Because... Uh, there's unintended consequences, like less the original designer and engineer of the system is able to predict, uh, even one with good intent is able to predict the consequences of such a system. Is that- is That's that right. There are some software systems, right, that run without humans in the loop that are quite complex. And that's like the electronic markets. And we get flash crashes all the time. We get, um, you know, in the in the heyday of uh, high frequency trading, there's a lot of market microstructure, people doing all sorts of weird stuff that the market, um, designers had never really thought about, contemplated, or intended. So when we run these full-on systems with these automated trading bots, um, now they become automated, you know, killer drones, and then all sorts of other stuff. We we are that's what I mean by we're at the dawn of the cybernetic era and the end of the era of just pure software. Are you more concerned if you're thinking about cybernetic systems or even like self-replicating systems? So so systems that aren't just doing a particular task, but are able to sort of multiply and scale in mm -hmm. some dimension in, mm -hmm. in the digital or even the physical world. Are you more concerned about uh, like the lobster being boiled? So a gradual with us not noticing um, collapse of civilization or a big explosion? 
uh, it's like, oops, <laughs> kind of a, a big thing where everyone notices, but it's too late. I think that it will be a different experience for different people. <laughs> Um, I do I do um, share a common point of view with some of the climate um, you know people who are concerned about climate change and and just the uh, this uh, the, the the big existential risks that we have but unlike a lot of people who are who share my level of concern I think the collapse will not be quite so dramatic as some of them think and what I mean is that I think that for certain tiers of let's say economic class or certain locations in the world, people will experience dramatic collapse scenarios. But for a lot of people, especially in the developed world, the um, realities of collapse will be managed. There will be narrative management around it so that they essentially insulate, the middle class will be used to insulate the upper class from the pitchforks and the and the um, flaming torches and everything. It's interesting because, uh, so my specific question wasn't as general. My question was more about cybernetic systems or <laughs> software. Okay. Uh, I, it's interesting, but it, it would nevertheless perhaps be about class. So the effect of algorithms might affect certain classes more than others. Absolutely. I was more thinking about whether it's social media algorithms or actual robots. Is there going to be a gradual effect on us where we wake up one day and don't recognize the humans we are? Or, yeah. or is it something truly dramatic where there's, you know, like a, a meltdown of a nuclear reactor kind of thing, Chernobyl, like uh, catastrophic events that um, are almost bugs in a program that scaled itself too quickly? Yeah, I'm not as concerned about the visible stuff. And the reason is because the big visible explosions, I mean, this is something I said about social media is that, you know, at least with nuclear weapons, when a nuke goes off, you can see it and you're like, well, that's really, wow, that's kind of bad, right? I mean, uh, Oppenheimer was reciting the Bhagavad Gita, right? When he saw one of those things go off. So we can see nukes are really bad. He's but not social. reciting anything about Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> well, but right. But then when when you have social media, when you have um, uh, all these different things that conspire to create a layer of virtual experience for people that alienates them from you know reality and from each other, that's very pernicious. It's impossible to see, right? And it, it, it kind of slowly gets in there. 